I'm Smithy Jaswal. I work here at Scripps Research. Um, one of my specific areas of expertise is looking at sleep medicine from more of a digital perspective. I would say that this has been one of the most consistent things in sleep medicine. Most people probably need on the order of seven to nine hours of sleep per night. And if you're getting, say, like seven hours of sleep and an hour and a half nap at some point during the day, all of that sort of combines. But then there's this sort of whole thing about, can I catch up on, like if I slept five hours all week each night, and can I catch up by saying, I, by getting nine hours of sleep on Saturday and Sunday? And what we're finding is that's probably not the case. Because what we think is if you're you know going from five hours to say nine hours on a weekend you're almost you almost have a jet lag of sorts that you're pushing yourself into what we're finding more and more is that people who don't have enough sleep or who don't have enough quality sleep have more and more health problems that we worry about so things like diabetes or high blood pressure or coronary artery disease or so many of these other diseases that are associated with poor sleep time or short sleep duration or even not enough quality sleep potentially. Um, a lot of studies have shown that people don't make decisions as well. There are many things and it depends on if you're thinking about it on a on a day-to-day -day basis or if you're thinking about it on more of a long-term kind of a chronic illness type of a type of a picture. The more and more time you spend not getting enough sleep, the more you're gonna see of these effects. There have been studies specifically done on nursing populations where women and men who are working six nights a month, for example, on an overnight shift, that's about as little as it takes for them to develop a higher risk of you know, breast cancer or even GI cancers have also been you know, implicated in that sort of thing. And how long do you have to do that? I mean, I think that's not necessarily known. I think that also depends on what other the risk factors you have, right? So if you're someone who's already, you know, predisposed or, or you know, is a smoker and you're already, you know, maybe getting going to get breast cancer or already at risk, and then you're also a shift worker and not sleeping well, that's going to compound your risk. You know, I think there are ways to get better sleep. Um, I think there have been some studies that talk about, you know, should you try and shield blue light or, you know, wear sunglasses as you're, you know, leaving the hospital or, you know, nap here or, you know, nap right before the shift. I think there are these piece of, pieces of advice that we can give to shift workers where we can tell them you might function better on your shift or you might be able to get better sleep. But I think there's, you know, little in terms of your work life that you're going to be able to do to mitigate those risks. There, then there are the other things that you're going to have to do to try and, you know, help yourself so like a better diet or you know just the other things stop smoking you know, for example um you know and doing those things to help mitigate that risk that you're giving yourself while you're a shift worker so it's almost more important to be healthier if you're in that kind of a job that's ill-advised i think is the, the i'm gonna i'm gonna answer that just sort of straightforwardly but i do feel like we meet these people who say you know i i function on four hours of sleep i function on five hours of sleep and my my life is fantastic and it's great and i think there's sort of two categories here i think there's an incredibly small portion of the population that is genetically predisposed to function well on a short sleep time and those clusters are incredibly small then you have people who chronically get a short amount of sleep and may not realize that they are you know fat overall fatigued and they're just so used to this sort of chronic sense of fatigue that they think they're that they're functioning but if you were to compare them you know force them into an eight hour sleep regimen and if you you know did certain like reaction time testing or different things you might find that they're functioning better on more sleep and i'm I, you know I, I think that's how people got through medical school <laughs> you know overall and um, so sometimes people don't even realize that they need the sleep uh, but the percentage of people who truly are gen genetically predisposed to a shorter sleep time is very small. Refresh is, um, simply put, it's a digital research study. We're recruiting people um, basically from online or mobile platforms and bringing them to join this study. And what we ask them to do is link in their fitness tracker from like their Fitbit or their Apple Watch. Um, and then also ask them to fill out different sort of questionnaires on how they think they sleep, what their risk factors for like maybe sleep apnea are, you know, different mental health surveys. We also try and check in on them a couple times, you know, in a week uh, to see what their mood is and how they felt like they slept. So kind of just to get a 
snapshot of what, you know, a couple days out of their week might look like, for example. And then, you know, we have ideas for different sub studies or kind of launches to do off of that. But the base refresh was really just designed to sort of start gathering sleep data in a large percentage of the population.